Now this is real history. Here are news reports from the 16th and 17th centuries that go back. Here's the Boston Newsletter, one of the early newspapers in the United States, the New York Weekly Journal. This is the kind of thing that people were able to read at the founding of this country. And this is pretty much where it all began, in this country anyway. Down there you see a printing press. That's what they looked like in 1776 when the Declaration of Independence was printed. They call this the First Amendment Gallery and is devoted to the freedoms which the First Amendment guarantees. Freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom of assembly, and freedom to petition. Of course, there may be some things that the First Amendment doesn't cover. Here's Bart Simpson at the blackboard writing, the First Amendment does not cover burping. A lot of people, of course, don't trust the press. And a section of this museum is devoted to the mistakes and lies of the press. The display covers things like using unnamed sources, which is very controversial in journalism. Here's a picture of Judith Miller, who went to jail, a New York Times reporter then, because she would not give up her sources in the trial of Lewis Libby. And then there are the mistakes that we make in journalism. Here are some famous newspaper headlines, the one at the top, President Harry Truman holding up a copy of the Chicago Tribune that said Dewey defeats Truman, which of course wasn't true, it was the other way around. Here's something else that bothers a lot of people about journalism. But it's part of journalism. It's called sensational journalism or tabloid journalism. As the banner says, it's about sex, crime, and scandal. And there's a great quote from Jerry Seinfeld. He said, people that read tabloids deserve to be lied to. I don't know if I'd go that far, but you've got to know what you're looking at when you look at some of these tabs. Elvis seen at Graceland, headless body in topless bar. One of the galleries in the museum is devoted to the great tragedy of our time, the catastrophe, the attack of 9-11. Wall of newspaper headlines covering the attack. And the centerpiece is a piece of the antenna from the North Tower of the World Trade Center, which of course was salvaged after the attack. These are journalists who gave their lives covering the news. There are a lot of familiar names, familiar to me anyway, up there. Michael Kelly, David Kaplan, David Bloom, our own CBS, James Brolin and Paul Douglas. It's hard to look at that, but it's good to know that they were doing what they thought was important when they died. This is a pretty stark reminder of what it's like when there is no freedom. It's a guard tower from the East German side of the old Berlin Wall. During the Cold War, there was no more visible symbol of the divide between East and West. It's blank on the East side. You couldn't express yourself, you could be shot. But on the West side, there were expressions of outrage and anger and cries for freedom. Here's where you can find out about the beginnings of broadcasting. From the first transmission by Marconi, from the SOS broadcast by the Titanic in 1912, to the beginnings of radio in this country around 1920. Looks pretty funny now to see all this stuff. These big old mics, these old fashioned control panels. And did you know that the first television images were transmitted in 1927? even though television didn't really become sort of a household thing until the late 40s or early 50s. Well, here's an idea. It says right here, be a TV reporter. And if you've always thought that anybody could do it, I'm going to show you you're right. Just step right up here. This is the interactive show yourself as a reporter exhibit at the museum. And this gentleman here is going to help us figure out how it works. We start with the barcode. We have to pick a background. Which would you like, the White House? I'll take the White House. The White House. Okay, what is your first name, sir? Bill. I'm 
putting that into the machine so we can identify your photo, All right. which you're going to take with you when you're finished. Now, how about emailing this? Can we? Indeed, when you're done, we show you how to access the museum's website. Then you can download everything you recorded here, and you can send it to 100 of your closest friends. OK, I'm going to send this to the executive producer of the early show uh, after we do this so that he can see if I could be a TV reporter. Now, you'll notice that even though what I see behind me is a gray wall, you see the White House, it's because it's electronically inserted, not something that we're really allowed to do on a regular basis. In fact, they frown on it. But let's just pretend that I'm really at the White House and I could say, good morning. Today at the White House, they're going to try to tell us the best possible spin on what's going on, and we're going to try to figure out what's really happening. Bill Plant, CBS News, at the museum, but at the White House, sort of.